I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, July the 8th, 2015. Ynet reports that Hamas leader Khalid Mashal said today that Israel has sent messages to the terror group through a European mediator asking for the return of the bodies of two IDF soldiers, 20-year-old Staff Sergeant Oron Shaul and 23-year-old Lieutenant Hadar Golden were killed during Operation Protective Edge last summer. Their bodies presumably are being held by Hamas. According to Mashal, Hamas told the mediator that it would not negotiate with Israel nor give any information about the two soldiers until Israel releases Palestinian prisoners who were released during the Gilad Shalit exchange but then rearrested for new offenses. And one year after Israel launched Protective Edge in response to incessant rocket fire from Hamas in Gaza, Ynet cites a source in the IDF Southern Command saying that the terror group has yet to restore its stockpile of rockets to what it was before the war, but that it was getting closer to doing so. The source also said that Hamas members had once again begun digging terror tunnels leading from Gaza into Israel, but that the IDF would soon be putting a new system into place to help detect these tunnels. Israel's Minister of Religious Affairs, David Azulai, attempted to clarify the remarks he made yesterday about reformed Jews, in which he called them Jews who had lost their way and that he did not consider them real Jews. After much backlash from the American Jewish community, as well as from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Azulai told the Knesset today that, quote, elements with a vested interest had taken advantage of his words. Azulai then stated it's clear to everyone that Jews, even though they sin, are Jews. Azulai also said Reform Judaism had done great damage to the Jewish people. President of the Union for Reform Judaism, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, had responded earlier to Azulai's original remarks. Jacob said it would be one thing if Minister Azulai's ignorant and myopic views of Reform Judaism were nothing more than his own semi-coherent ramblings. But the real danger, Jacob said, is that Azulai sits at the cabinet table now and could turn those views into policy. Jacobs expressed appreciation, though, for Prime Minister Netanyahu's rejection of Azulai's offensive remarks. National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman, said Azulai's disturbing remarks contribute to an atmosphere of exclusion, adding, one would hope that a minister charged with administering religious affairs would be a voice for respect and tolerance of the religious views and traditions of others. The World Jewish Congress is urging authorities in Sekashver Herar, Hungary, to stop their plans to honor a government minister well known for his support of the Nazis and for his actions against the Jews of Hungary. The city's leaders are planning to place a life-size bronze statue in the city of Balint Homan, an outspoken supporter of Nazi Germany. WJC President Ronald Lauder called on Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban to block the plans. Lauder said 70 years after the end of World War II, it is inconceivable and wrong for a city to erect a statue in honor of a known anti-Semite and a key figure in the persecution of Hungarian Jews before and during World War II. Closing arguments were made today in the trial of Oskar Groning, the 94-year-old man known as the bookkeeper of Auschwitz, who is facing 300,000 counts of accessory to murder at the Nazi death camp. Attorneys representing 51 Auschwitz survivors and their families in their statements today criticized the German justice system for how long it took them to bring the former SS sergeant to trial. Attorney Thomas Walther also told the court that Groning does deserve respect for talking about the role he played in Auschwitz, but that survivors, quote, remain greatly disappointed that they didn't hear him take personal responsibility. A verdict in the case is expected later this month. And Israel's leaders gathered last night at Mount Herzl to pay tribute to and mark 111 years since the death of Theodore Herzl, the visionary of the Jewish state. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli President Reuven Rivlin spoke at the memorial ceremony in Jerusalem, where Rivlin praised Herzl's vision of equality for the state of Israel, one that maintains the balance between the Jewish and democratic identity of the state, as well as the dignity and identity of all of its citizens. 
And looking now at our programming for tonight, Wednesday, July the 8th, at 7 o'clock, JBS President Mark S. Golub talks about two ways in which viewers who truly enjoy and appreciate the unique contribution JBS makes to the state of Israel and to American Jewry can support JBS and can urge television providers to add the JBS channel. Highlights of our exclusive television coverage of Culture Fest 2015, a series of Yiddish language performances and plays organized by the National Yiddish Theater Folks Bina, begins at 8 o'clock tonight as Alan Alda presents Theodore Bikel with the National Yiddish Theater Folks Bina's Lifetime Achievement Award. That's from the Museum of Jewish Heritage and includes a medley performed by Bikel. Then at 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with Fiddler on the Roof lyricist Sheldon Harnick on L'Chaim, and at 10, author Cynthia Ozick speaks at the 92nd Street Y in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, July the 8th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.